Hello and welcome to another editing video in which I want to show you some of the tools I use to edit my landscape photos. And here we have a photo I took on my recent photo tour to Morocco. So dates for 2025 are not yet out, but if you want to be one of the first to learn about the new tour, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. But what I want to show you now is how I edit this photo. So this here is how the photos come out of Lightroom. And what I did here, I had bracketing and did the HDR merge in Lightroom. Very simple stuff, just making sure I get as much information over to Photoshop as possible. You also see down here there are some tiny lens flares, which is why I also shot a sequence where I had the finger on my hand in front of the sun. So here this area looks much cleaner and I can also be sure I don't have lens flares anywhere else in the scene. You also see here when you look at the name of the layers, we have this HDR layer and here the stacked layer. I have several videos on this, how I focus stack my landscape images. To put in a nutshell, I used automatic bracketing in the Canon R5 and then used Helicon Focus to create this stacked version. So this here is sharp from near foreground to background. What I now have to do is just merge the two. So the first thing what I want to do is go to edit auto align layers, just making sure they properly align. Let me just zoom in and make sure this action was successful because you always have to double check what Photoshop does here. Sometimes it's a bit off, but here it looks good. Now, what I want to do is I put a black mask on this HDR layer, holding down Alt, clicking on the mask icon. And now with a white soft brush of 100%, I just paint in this area, basically revealing the sky from the HDR layer. And I don't need to do much more because those areas, they already look good enough in the stacked layer, but maybe here around the horizon, I'll also use the HDR layer because here the light, the warm light is pretty nice. So let me just finish this up. Here, I don't want the lens flares. Let's zoom out, alt clicking on the mask. So you see the mask. So actually here I can also paint it in. I could also have done just select the sky and bring in the sky area, but here it's not necessary. Now I'm just going to flatten those two down, holding Control or Command E. And now I'll also quickly transform them. So with Control T, I bring up the transform tool. And since I was shooting down a bit, I have to correct the perspective attached. So I pull out this corner, I pull out this corner and here with this image I don't need to remove the keystoning completely because I don't think that's necessary. That's a top-down perspective here. It's nicely framed and I'm not bothered so much by the keystoning down here in the houses as with some other photos of solely architecture. But I still want to remove some of it so I pull out this. I also will pull up this a bit which balances the photo by moving the so-called Napoleon's hat more into the center of the frame. So let's do it like this. Then also this edge is a little higher and I get more balance toward this one here. Let's try to pull this out a touch more, but I don't want to lose this rock here. And stretch it a touch, press enter, and that's it for the perspective correction. Now what I usually do, I crop the image because I don't want the pixels outside of a frame. This keeps the size of the image smaller. You see all this space outside. I delete those crop pixels now. Then I rename this one here to base and I now save the image before I continue with any creative edits. Now the next thing what I like to do with a photo like this where we have a lot of clear sky, I use Lumensia from Greg Benz and I want to use this dust filter here, which makes any particles I have in the sky visible. And thankfully, my sensor is quite clean, but it's still, it doesn't hurt to quickly check it. So up here, we have a spot and I'll use the heating brush, current and below, and just remove it. But I think that's really it for this image looks pretty clean so let's hide those flatten it down and also let's 
have a quick scan of the town if we can remove something. For example, down here, I'm just gonna remove this area because it's a little distracting. And otherwise, most of the town looks pretty nice and also the background. So let's zoom out and continue with some adjustments. So for this image here, as I bring it over from Lightroom, it looks pretty flat. So this area is very bright, the middle ground. And what I want to do now is using some Dutch and Burn to darken this because it grabs too much attention. So a blank layer set to soft light blend mode. I grab a black brush using like 5% because I like to build up this effect. And then I'll just paint darkening this area also this area here of the Napoleon's hat and making it a lot darker, which helps to create some dimension also here on this side. Since it's on a separate layer, I can also adjust the opacity later on. To avoid darkening the very dark tones, I can use Lumensia again, grab a lights luminosity mask and I'll not update now. Let's also check the lights too. It's too restricting, so I use the lights. Click here on select. And then again with like 10%, I'm gonna dark down some of those brighter houses, which also removes some of the contrast in the middle ground and makes this area stand out a bit less because as I said, as it came over from Lightroom, it was grabbing too much attention. So see before and the after. So already looks, in my opinion, much better and more realistic because we're shooting directly into the sun so there should be also some shade in the image. Let's also look at the foreground here. This area darkened a bit. This area also to the sides here creating a creative vignette. So not just a circular vignette but using dodge and burn to make it a bit more focused so darkening down more the shadowy areas to create more dimension in the photo. Also, this area here looks a bit too bright. With Dodge and Burn, sometimes I zoom out a lot because then I just look at the photo in terms of brightness and overall focus. And I can do some more dodging and burning. So now see the before and the after. And I can adjust the opacity and dial in the dodge and burn just as I want it. So next it's time for some plugins and I've shown you Lumina Neo in the past already in two videos. This time I want to show you how I use it for a landscape photo like this where I have the sun in the frame. First I create a new flat layer from those settings. Control Shift Alt E. Then I go to Filter, Skylum, Lumina Neo. And if you don't have Lumina Neo, you can just continue with some curves and some additional dodge and burn in Photoshop. But I like to use some of the tools in Lumina Neo because they get me to the desired result much quicker. And up here in the My Presets, I actually have a preset for such landscape photos, which I call Glowing Landscapes. I now apply it because it gives me a good start and then we're gonna go through the different settings so you see what settings I do. When I go to the edit tab and go to edits, you see all the different edits I applied as part of the preset. We can also do down here the before and the after. So you see it's much more shine around the sun. And yeah, let's just go through the different layers starting with the landscape layer where I just added some golden hour light and what I did, I used the radial gradient here just around the sun. So if we show it, you see, I just made the area around the sun a little warmer. Then I added a bit of a vignette. It actually doesn't do too much. So maybe I fine tune it, make it a little darker. So going minus 20, but as with Photoshop, also with Lightroom, I do many subtle changes which add on top of each other. And you can also do this very easily in Lumina Neo, so you don't need to go all overboard with your edits. You can use this tool subtly. Next, I use the Relight here. I showed this in another video. So you can just change the brightness of things closer to you. You can also adjust the depth, so basically which area is affected. 
and again a subtle change just making the foreground a little darker. Then I went with the atmosphere, added a slight amount of mist. Let me just increase it so you see. So just making the background even more hazy and you can also adjust the depth and control which area is affected by it. So just here this area in the background around Napoleon's hat and just with a very small amount here just making the image a bit more hazy for creating additional depth. Then we go to the sun rays and this one is really nice and you can go completely overboard with it but what I did so first of all you place the sun so I placed it right where we have the sun here then you can increase the amount this looks fake so what I find if you just go with a little bit here something around 20 this looks pretty cool overall look also keep it down in the area around 20 and then you can change the length of the sunbeams penetration for an image like this it doesn't do too much uh, it will just increase the glow so I also keep it pretty low then you can change the sun radius the glow radius and the amount you can adjust the number of rays you can randomize them to so just looking what what works best so I go with something like this and finally you can adjust the color the warmth and then you get from this to this so this is kind of the biggest change to this image now and finally also some additional glow here before after just making the background the bright areas around the sun glow even more and now the before and the after so the image now has much more depth and it was just done with a few tools here in Lumina Neo and now I'll add a mask onto this layer and in some areas just remove a bit of the effect because here it got a little bit too dark so I just use a black brush to get some of the detail back also here in this area let's zoom out a bit also here in the sky there's maybe a bit too much glow so let's bring this back but all in all it looks pretty cool already let's now put a U saturation layer on top and control the individual colors because here the reds are a little bit over the top so let's brighten them a bit and reduce the saturation maybe not so much so again just subtle changes that's usually what does the trick let's also see what a photo filter does if you want to have the image warmer or cooler let's cycle through the different layers so yeah i don't think cool looks good let's invert the mask and maybe make the area here around the sun a little warmer and also here in the background and again just a subtle change before and after let's use a curves layer darken the top area a bit so i use a gradient from black to white let's zoom out a bit here it was a bit too dark so i mask it out and you see that's a lot of very subtle changes which bring me to the end result yeah and i think this looks pretty cool here around the sun it's a little too bright so what i'm gonna do just use a layer a new one use again lumensia and select the very bright areas then i just sample one of those colors here and now i paint and bear with me this now doesn't look so good because now all the bright tones are gone that's just the first step in sculpting this area around the sun now let's deselect now i put a layer mask on this and now here with a soft round brush 100 percent black i again mask out the effect here to the center so the sun should be pure white let's just do this I make it a little wider go to 30 percent and have the sun again bleed out a bit but now the transition is much more even than before again another subtle change adding to the overall look of the image yeah and i think that's it now i usually now let this image sit for a day or two then do the final adjustments prepare it for web and 
put it onto my homepage. I hope you liked this little photo editing video. Let me know if you want to see more of those. And yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.